of the safety glasses. So there's a huge industry in there. That's for sure in the military. Um, Orange County. Hey, glad to have you on. Irvine used to be a big stomping ground of mine. My brother lives out there. Um, so Leah, sign and graphic design business. Okay, and certified as a woman-owned business. Well, welcome. Uh, there's a lot of that on the signage and um, uh, graphic design. It'd be interesting to chat with you, you know, one-on-one -on -one somewhere on whether um, the signage is actually, you know, like, like let's say um, base signage, go this way to get to the PX, et cetera. And then uh, graphic design, whether that fits into even design that an organization or an agency might need for their annual reports or something. Uh, there's a there's a large world there. Hey, Denise. Um, welcome from California. That's funny. Do you go by D or Denise? I see both names there. And from LA, the IT industry. Uh, Veteran known. Well, the first step is to go join the military. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Timothy. Um, the uh, thank you for your service. Uh, it's good to always have, meet other fellow uh, service people. Um, let me know if you ever have any questions about it. I went through that. I'm a veteran known company, and the process was uh, actually a little harder for me to get better known than it was Hub Zone. It was ironic how hard it was to prove I was a veteran. I'm like, here's my DD-214. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So, so Debbie, that's robotic teleprompter stands. That's pretty interesting. A large market of politicians. No, that's huge. And, and uh, you know, Debbie, I'm just reaching here, but I could see. So Debbie's saying in the chat that she does like the teleprompters, that type of stuff. Well, as agencies start moving more and more into social media and they're having to do uh, some of these live events, uh, I'm a good Irishman. I can just ramble off at the, at the uh, that's funny. I just hit pause there, a brain freeze, but I could talk forever, right? Um, but for a lot of folks, if they're trying to do something to be able to have a teleprompter right there, uh, that'd be interesting. My contact information, you find me on uh, a lot of places out there on social media, but please reach back to me. I'd love to find out about that because I do a lot of training. I'd love to find out whether a teleprompter would help keep me kind of on target. So speaking of that, I'm noticing the time. We're getting close to uh, uh, three o'clock or we're just hitting it. I want to give us a, just a few minutes after the start. I usually start exactly on time, and I really appreciate those of you who showed up on time. Um, one of my concerns is I sent out that reminder email and it actually had a, a bad link. So those of you who clicked on the right link, it worked. And if somebody clicked on a different link, it didn't work. And I'm hoping it, you know they'll give them a couple of seconds to just try another one. Um, just looking at some of these other folks here. Uh, so medical distribution. And that's funny, or cast room, wound care. Uh, I don't know if you saw D, they just, um, I just did a video about my son. Uh, he fell He fell and broke his arm in two places. It was a pretty spectacular fall, but um, he was going through that. Maybe that's an industry he can get into. Hello, Tony from California. Alex, burners, boilers, gloves. That's a try <laughs> and more. Okay, so Alex is out there having lots of fun. And, and Alex, I'm going to have fun with you because that's my son's name as well. So I have two sons, Alex and Gabe, twins. Um, Santa Barbara, hey, one of the most beautiful spots around. I do the uh, a, a bike ride out there called Best Buddies that goes from Monterey to um, basically Hearst Castle out there. So it's a lot of fun for me. Um, and, and I come from the D.C. area and go out there. So I just love it being on the uh, Pacific Coast Highway. Hello from Northern California. Where in Northern California? Is that Josanne or Joanne? Um, GPS tracking, okay. New York City, whoa, there we go. We just went from the West Coast straight to the East Coast. So welcome from New York City. Uh, I don't wanna make any New York City jokes, but apparently I just had to right there. So um, hello from San Diego. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to uh, uh, stop my chattering. I'm really excited to have you on. Um, I'm gonna start in one minute. I'm gonna kind of load up the slides here. Um, I'm really excited about where we can go. Uh, as we start talking, um, I'm gonna have some of my team, maybe they'll engage you in the chatting, but I'll focus less on the chat so I can focus more on the content um, and, and stay on time for what we're doing. Cause I share a lot, it's, it's fast paced and it fills up the entire hour. But um, you know, at the end, I wanna be able to get some questions there. Um, and then uh, questions answered for you. Do me a favor also, uh, for those of you who are on 
make sure you're throwing in any questions you have, whether it's a question you have now or as you go along and you want a little clarification. At the very least, if you just throw it in, we'll try to get it at the end or maybe I can follow up and say, hey, you were asking about uh, such and such. Well, here it is. So, all right, I'm going to go. Hey, hello from Petaluma, Brianna. My uh, my older brother just won city council out there on uh, on uh, in Petaluma, Kevin McDonald. So wonder if you knew him. I hope you <laughs> let's not talk about whether you voted for him or not. Um, that's between you and him. Um, let me go ahead and switch over. I'm going to switch over and try to get this uh, slides loaded up here and running, and then we're off to the races. So uh, I'm going to go quiet for a second as I try to think here. Okay, I'm getting ready to share. Okay, I think I'm uh, up and sharing. I'm gonna wait a second. Generally, there's like a 12 second delay between what I say and then what you see. Uh, it's actually a little faster today, which is great. And looks like my slides are up and running, so we're great. Um, we're gonna get started. Today's topic is definitely 10 tips to attract federal buyers. And I'm excited about this because uh, one of the challenges small businesses have is we just don't know. And, um, and I'm here to share some with you today. There's a lot of great people out there. So, um, let me go ahead and click. One of my favorite uh, mentors out there is Yoda. And um, let me just look, good view, good, we're looking. Okay, somebody's just texted me, let me know we're good to go. So Yoda is one of my uh, um, favorite advisors because his advice is just so direct, right? And uh, Luke Skywalker was training to be a, a Jedi and he was just uh, you know, having a hard time of it. And he told Yoda, I'm trying, I'm trying. And Yoda said, do or do not. There is no try. And the reason I put that there is because it's the same thing with small business success in government contracting. You either do it or you don't do it, but there's no try. There's no excuses. Um, I, I like to say that there is no secret. It's not magic to success in federal contracting. It's just a process. And uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the process, but if you follow the process, you will be successful. If you're willing to put in the time to get the job done, um, you will be successful and you will increase your revenues. And, and that's a, a big part of what I want to give for you. So here, a quick intro. I'm going to go through, talk a little bit about me. The roadmap to success are the tips. And then at the last part, I'm going to just mention um, Small Business Success Club that I have. Um, and it's going to be a brief mention just to introduce you to it if you're interested in following on. I like to give a lot of free content to people to play the game, to be able to get in the game. Um, and then I say, you know, pay me if you want to win, right? But I think you shouldn't have to um, pay to get things like these uh, these tips or get registered in SAM, et cetera. Um, okay, let's get started with a little bit about me. Um, I want to try to, I'll let you read this, but basically I have a ton of experience being a small business owner and a government contractor. Um, I've been in business for uh, as young as I am for 30 years. And th that's because I just started young. I started out in Silicon Valley, um, worked my way into the army, spent six years in the army. Uh, the army, I started at a squad level. I was in the United States Rangers, Army Rangers. And um, there I understood it at the unit level and moved up to Garrison Command, Corps Command and exited the army at um, in the Pentagon working for the Secretary of the Army. So I quickly learned the inside of uh, a particular agency, in this case, the Department of Army, but understanding how we did procurement and some of these other things. As I transitioned out of the Army, um, after a brief six month stand at a large government contractor, I started becoming a, a entrepreneur back in 97, 98 timeframe. And I've been an entrepreneur since then. I've had five companies, a couple of them uh, went really well and a couple of them just petered out. Um, I'm on my fifth company and, and I was starting something new. So late last year, I sold um, my fourth company, started a fifth company in October of 2017. And um, this new company is a brand new company. So despite all my experience, I'm starting from scratch. So I had to you know, get registered again as a business, get veteran certified, um, HUBZone certified. So there's a lot in there that I began to realize um, the challenges out there. In particular, the HUBZone Chamber of Commerce reflects the challenges I saw with the HubZone program and companies who are HubZones out there. Uh, it was just an abysmal uh, performance on their goals. There's supposed to be $13 billion basically that goes to HubZone certified companies, but barely half of that was happening. Um, you know, as a veteran, I wanted to sit there and see how 
um, we can improve the performance of you know hiring veterans, not just the tags, but really looking out there. So I really got engaged in um, trying to improve the government performance. And from that, I got into this passion I now have of helping small businesses. And that's where you see this neilmcdonald.com. And you'll hear me talk about the Small Business Success Club or any of these other things. What I realized is I, I really enjoy helping small businesses out there go from zero to let's say 100K or zero to a million. Um, and I've got a lot of experience in there and I want to share it with you. So I've already sent you emails and you saw it, but I just wanna kind of recap in case you haven't uh, got the email handy, but these are the things I wanna to try to touch on as we go through this webinar today. Um, obviously the number one question I get from small businesses out there is why aren't I winning more federal business? Um, so we're going to talk on that. Um, you can see some of these other ones. Where should I register besides Sam? There's all sorts of places you can register and, and a lot of people don't know about it. So we'll talk briefly about that. Um, how can I find who sells and who buys what I sell? Uh, those are really important uh, as we go forward. How can I find subcontracting opportunities? How can I build relationships with industry and federal folks? Anytime you hear me talking about things, it's always with the government and with other small businesses. Um, you, you, there's different sales you're doing there, but you're always building the relationships. Um, how can I have federal buyers contacting me? This is one of my most passionate ones and, and I will touch on the DSBS course I created and it's free out there. Um, how can I make the buyers shortlist? You know, when they're looking for vendors, how do I make sure they found me? That's a really important one. Um, how can I stand apart from my competitors? Differentiation is a big deal when you're trying to compete against hundreds or thousands of uh, other businesses like yours. How can I get my capability statement forwarded to the actual buyer? It doesn't just stop at the small business professional. Um, and then the last one here is how can I get selected by teaming partners? I really want to get on teaming partners uh, um, radar so that I can get subcontracts and then begin to perhaps prime later on. If you stay through this whole course, um, at the end, I'll send you a free checklist of the 10 action items I think you should take that will move you forward incrementally um, in being more visible to the government. So let's go ahead and move forward on the first point. Why aren't I winning more federal business? Um, one of the biggest things I say to people is that uh, you need to focus on first things first. I know so many small business owners who have just started their company in 2018 or in the past few months, and they're trying to land contracts. And it's like, whoa, whoa, wait, there's, there's a process. And if you do the process, you will find tremendous su success. But if you try to jump ahead, you'll just find yourself making mistakes. And so the first things first, uh, and we'll talk about it in a minute, is your SAM profile and your DSBS profile. That's the foundation to everything you do for marketing as a small business. Um, another reason we aren't winning as much federal business is that we're trying to take before we give. Uh, you're new to the um, new to the game, uh, you know, and so you need to give to others. You need to give to the government in some way, whether it's producing content you put out on the internet for them to consume and learn, whether you're giving to uh, teaming partners by saying, hey, I'll, I'll, uh, I'd love to subcontract with you and 25% is fine. I don't need 50%, right? It's this idea of this mentality of do unto others as you want them to do to you. It really is that simple. Um, I describe swinging for the fence as trying to go for not only a prime contract, but trying to go for like a $5 million or a $10 million one. If you haven't got your first dollar, stop trying to go for your first hundred dollars. You know, if you haven't got your first hundred dollars, stop trying to go for your first hundred thousand dollars. It, it's incremental. And if you believe that it's incremental, you will get to that stage. And then the last thing I want to talk about is the this is really important to me that people understand my perspective on the three phases of revenue growth for a small business. The first thing you need to do is um, earn your paycheck. That means you need to get enough contracting work that you can eat. You have a responsibility to yourself and your family first. And so um, a lot of us get out and we start, and we're like, oh, we're gonna be able to get into it. Don't try to grow your business. The first thing you wanna do is to just get yourself that first contract where you can be billable, which allows you to begin to build relationships and learn and all this other stuff. But most importantly, to bring in the revenue that allows you to begin to build your company. Some people do this by, um, uh, staying at their old job and trying to land a contract and then jumping. Other people jump and then they try to get business. But either way, you need to earn your paycheck first. And that generally is you doing the work. The next thing is you want to hire enough people. So phase two is hire enough people that the profit from their efforts pays for you whether you work or not. 
right? That's business. That's a, that's a small business. And now the profit is paying you and you're making money. Now you can sit at the beach and enjoy yourself, or you can take advantage of that next stage that you're at by building your company and growing your company. And the last one is grow the company. So this is where you really just start taking off and, and um, improving. You begin to hire a lot of uh, more senior people, et cetera. But make sure you remember, first things first, it begins with earning your own paycheck. So there's a lot of things you should think about from uh, where should you register besides um, SAM.gov. A lot of us know about it. And I just want to quickly run through a lot of the tools uh, that are out there. Let me just uh, make sure the slide's coming through. So um, these are key information repositories. It's just a quick way to look at it. Obviously, all of us are in Dun & Bradstreet. But remember, uh, there's more to it than just uh, the initial Dun's number you get. So pay attention to that. SAM, we're going to go into a lot, but SAM is definitely where you uh, need to be. GLS is where you go. They call it supplemental pages. I don't really focus on that. But if you're getting uh, 8A certified or HubZone certified, you would use this tool. Um, Dynamic small business search is uh, the be all end all. It's the Google. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But it's the Google for the federal government when they're trying to find um, small businesses. So you need to make sure that's up to date. Uh, the VIP is just for uh, registering for uh, the folks who are saying they're going after a veteran certification. CPARS is something you'll get later on. I'm just popping it into your head so you're aware of it. Um, inside of CPARS is where your past performance is listed by the government saying how great a work you did or worse, how, how poorly you did. Um, FPDS is a place you can pop in. You can log in. It's, it doesn't require a login to use for the most basic part. Um, FBO is a great one. And if you talk with Jim White, who's the executive director of the HubZone Chamber of Commerce, you'll hear him talk about um, getting registered or putting yourself in the interested vendors list. This is kind of activity that we promote. And, and I won't go through it fully today, but it's a way for you to get out there and be visible incrementally. You're doing a lot of little visibility things, but you want to register there. Those are the government's uh, locations where you could register. But there's a bunch more that you can register in. Right. Number one is what I just showed you. Number two is a couple of examples here. Department of Energy. They've got, uh, I think, 17 or 20 something labs out there. And um, all of these labs have their own registration. And so you want to get if you want to work with energy, you want to get in there and register with them. The Navy has 10 buying commands. And so you want to make sure you get into each buying command. Talk to the small business specialists in there and say, do you have a unique um, way of doing registration. Should I get in here in any particular way? Some of them do. Like one, uh, I think it was NavC or NavAir, they have spreadsheets where you go and you register and get yourself put in as a hub zone company. And so for them, before they even go to DSBS, they'll go to their own spreadsheet. Knowing this is part of that, uh, part of the battle, right? Large government primes, all of them should have a small business or diversity um, location where you can register in there and, and become a registered vendor of the prime. Potentially when they have people internally looking for small businesses, that's where they go as their internal tool. The last place is small business specialists. And small business specialists, a good example is the Air Force or the Navy. They each have over 100 small business specialists, I think. And, uh, and certainly the, the Air Force has like 160 or something. But each one of them can do their own thing. And so you want to reach out to the ones you want to work with and begin to get on their radar. And we can talk in a different training about how do you really do that well. But if you reach out to them with your capability statement and begin to build the relationship, you are now getting registered into their system. And their system could be as simple as a hard drive folder that when they want to find small businesses, they just go in there and type in a keyword for eyeglasses and small business or something. And it comes up. Um, take a look on the right hand side. I put a picture in here just to showcase this a little bit. Um, Again, on the HubZone Chamber's website, you can see it here, hubzonechamber.org. On our website, we have a whole section that I've been building for the last year uh, on links that'll help you. So these small business office portals, if you click into each one of these civilian, defense, large government contractors, I've already put the links directly to their portals. So you don't have to go to Google or anything. It's, it's right here. And as we find more, we'll keep updating this. Um, part of what we want to do is make it easy for you to, uh, you know, spend 15 minutes once a day to say, I'm going to register for somebody new, register for somebody new. And by the end of the year, you'll have registered for two, 300 um, different entities. And that's, you know, that's called marketing, right? 
Okay, so let's move on to the next one. How to find out who sells and buys what I sell. And what that means uh, basically is, how do I find out who sells? And that's other small businesses. And how do I find out who buys? That's the government. You want to build a relationship with both of these folks. And so, um, and if you're having a trouble as we get into here, Cecilia, thanks. Um, go ahead and expand, uh, expand your slides in the window on the bottom right. You probably see a little expansion thing. Um, and you can see these. These will get a little tighter. But anyways, there's a couple of uh, uh, websites you can go to to find out a lot of information about who's doing what you do. The first one is FPDS. And the second one is USAspending.gov. I'm not going to demo USAspending.gov. You can go into it, look at it. Um, but in FPDS, I lay out basically how I do it so you, so you understand it from a very simple level. Um, the first thing I do is I go in and I'm putting in a keyword. Let's use SharePoint as an example because that happens to be you know, a skill set that my company has. And I look for people who have done SharePoint in the last 12 months. And, and I know it might be a little hard, but that's what's in this middle uh, field right here. It says SharePoint and the sign date was last year. So when you do that, it comes back with this huge window and a huge bunch of data. You can see um, there's 448 awards potentially that happened um, in the last year with the word SharePoint in it. And so over on the right-hand side, it says action obligation. This right-hand column, you can see, um, you can sort on anything. And I chose action obligation descending. The reason I did it will sound really logical to you. I wanted to see who won the most because that's who I want to talk to first. Theoretically, if you want a multi-million dollar contract in SharePoint, you might be open to giving me a, a subcontracting position so that I can work on the contract or, or as I grow, one of my people can work on the contract. This is building relationships. The first thing is to understand who do I want to go build a relationship with? So let me click to the next slide and I'm going to drill down on this image that you see. I'm going to go into different sections. So the first section I'm going to go into is the middle. Um, I talked about um, seeing the size. So right here on the right-hand column, third row down, it says action obligations, $6 million. And as you come down, you'll see it's $6 million, $5 million, $5 million, $5 million. Um, these are all good, good awards that as a, a small business, and I'm trying to grow, um, this is good for me to be able to reach out to all these folks and find out um, uh, what they're doing. So I can see over here on the left-hand side, who's done it. Um, on here, you can see a lot of information. I'm not going to try to dive deeply into it, but I just wanted to zoom in so you could see it because I'm going to zoom in a little bit further for you on the next slide uh, it, or in a minute. Um, so on the left-hand side of the first window you land on, it had had these, um, this set of data, the top 10 lists. And here, if I want to focus on just Securities and Exchange Commission, for example, um, they, they had 41 opportunities that were awarded in the last 12 months with the word SharePoint in it. So that's a good start for me. I could click on that. This is really important as you learn to focus on a particular agency. Now you can drive to that agency. You can see who's doing the work you do in that particular agency. So um, let me click over here for a second. And um, hold on. So uh, I want to pop in now back to the center, right? Here, I talked about which agencies were doing it. I showed you that, but now I'm showing you which vendors are doing it. Um, and so uh, I said, I want to find out who is selling what I sell. And I can look in here and see this company, Procentric, uh, it's doing 36, had 36 awards last time. So Procentric, I'm familiar with these people, right? SIR, SRA is not a small company, they're big. Um, but that's fine. They've won contracts. Buchanan Edwards, um, they're doing great stuff down in the State Department, Info Reliance. These are all good companies, right? Obviously, you got some bigger ones in here, but I can see who's winning the contracts. And over here, I can begin to see the sizes, right? These are the large contracts. This allows you to find out who's selling what and how to pursue them. So now the next thing is you want to go, how do I do homework on them? Right here, first we do our homework, then we call. That's what that call out box here on the bottom left is. So when you look at each row and each opportunity, you'll see that view icon. The red arrow is pointing right to view and I've expanded it on the bottom right. When you expand it, you'll see all sorts of information. Again, this is not a training on FPDS, but when you see it, one of the things you'll see is the contracting uh, agency. So it tells you right here, purchaser, who bought it, right? Who buys what I'm selling? 
these guys do. The State Department, the contracting office is the acquisition, something, something, right? Um, and when I come down and say, well, who's selling what I sell? Right here, contractor information. And when I come in, I see Iron Brick Associates. I'm, okay. And over on the right-hand side, it tells me uh, their phone number. That's, that's a good start. I've got the cage code and the DUNS number. Those are enough for me to get started and go do my homework. If they're a small business, I'll find them in DSBS and I'll find the president of the company's um, phone number and email address there. And so we're off to the races. It's a separate training on how to reach out to them. But when you think about how do I find who's selling and who's buying, remember FPDS. It's one of the best tools out there. It's really easy to use. Um, like all tools, it takes a little bit of training, but once you're in it, you know, um, I had to learn how to ride a bike. I fell a couple times. FPDS is the same, same way. I had to learn how to use it and I fell a couple times. But once I learned how to ride the bike, I was off to the races and it could explore the world. And once I learned FPDS, I could explore all the billions of dollars that's being awarded and find the ones that matter to me. Okay. How do I build these new relationships? <laughs> so, uh, one of my favorite things to just kind of let people know is uh, don't, don't, um, don't put your problems on anybody else. Uh, first off, none of us have time to hear your problems. Uh, if I had time to hear problems, I would go home and listen to my kids' problems, right? And, um, and I would help them with those problems. Uh, you don't need to make your relationships harder. You want to make it easier. And that goes to that second bullet. Instead of dumping problems, actually look in there and think to yourself, what problems does that person have? Um, how can I help them? And uh, so give before you get means look at what their problems are, see if you can bring a solution or if you're approaching them, approach them from the perspective of, hey, I could help you with this contract and really win it. Um, in the success club that we have, uh, I, I dig into training on how do you write emails that begin to open up those relationships. And I'll, and I'll tell you a quick example. I um, hope I'm not taking it away from future slides, but uh, when I started SV MacPack, which is my current new company, um, I reached out because I was doing SharePoint. And back then that was my focus, but it's evolved since then. Um, but SharePoint. So I reached out and I found 71 companies that did SharePoint. And I reached out to each one of the owners of those companies and 15 got back to me within 24 hours. And three or four of them became really good relationships with a uh, solid potential right there to um, work with them. And so the way I did that though, was writing an email and starting the conversation off with them about, here's what I could do to make you look even better to the government. Well, that sounds good. Let's come in and talk compared to, Hey, I really need a contract. I need some money. Well, we all do, right? But if you think about it from their perspective first, it really makes them feel good about you. So now another way of paying attention to how to build relationships is you want to follow uh, these people you want to build a relationship with, or um, I talked about Info Reliance, for example, you could follow their company page on um, LinkedIn and there's so much information in there. You can go in, you can learn about who the executives are inside of uh, uh, Info Reliance. I'm just using them as my example company at the moment, but you can find out who they are and then you can find out who their leaders are and pay attention to what's important to, th to them, going back to bullet two, right? The other, last thing is, if you know that this is a company you might wanna really work with, then set up a Google alert and a Google alert basically we'll send you an email every single day and, and perhaps a couple of times in the day with um, whenever anything in the internet pops up about uh, you know that particular company. If you wanted to track my company and you said, I wanna pay attention to everything on SV MacPack, then um, when you set that Google alert up, you will get notifications when I put content out, when there's a, a press release, uh, when there's an award, et cetera. So that's a way to pay attention. Um, and the last thing I wanna tell you about relationships is, uh, there's a great line out there that talks about um, where the sum total of the five people we hang out the most with. And, and the idea is we really don't have time for more relationships than that, really good relationships, right? Beyond those five people, we begin to have tier two type relationships. So what I'm talking about is, this, is the tier two relationship. Tier one relationships are your super tight um, teaming relationship type companies. And you really don't want more than five of them because... Uh, then you're having competing uh, relationships, if you will. But the, uh, the goal here is to have 10 or uh, 20 good relationships that you can develop and find, find the ones that lead into those uh, first five or tier one relationships. And so um, when you think about 
applying to companies, don't go beyond 20. It's just too much for you to handle. And it's way too hard to track that much information. So let's move on into how do I have these buyers contact me um, directly? And this is a big deal to me because um, it, it's one of the things I think is, is the mistakes that all small businesses out there are making. Uh, and I just looped everybody in. So let's just say 99%. Um, but when you think about who you're going to uh, have the federal government contact me, there's three type of buyers that I, I like to get your mind on. Um, or stakeholders within a federal government. The first one's the small business professionals. And if you don't know this, their job is to be a liaison between the government and small businesses in the community, as well as liaison between the small businesses and the program offices. So their job is to try to help it all um, run smoothly. They don't buy anything themselves, but they are excellent focuses of receptivity and they will help you learn how to do business in um, their agency in order to help their agency accomplish the mission. The second group is the contracting officers. These folks typically do not have anything to do with the scope, right? They're the, uh, they're the people with the power. They have the money. Uh, even though the program offices are the ones with the money, the contracting officers are the ones who spend it. And so you need to develop your relationships with them and you want them reaching out and contacting you. Um, and the last one is the program office. These are the people who have uh, the focus of dissatisfaction. Might be the director of facility management, director of IT, et cetera, right? Um, but those are the people who have the need. So they all have different ways of reaching out to you. An example is um, with the program office, those folks are going to reach out to you through the internet. They're going to do their own research. And so you want to develop content out there that shows that you're an expert. Whole different type of training, but you want to have that out there. Contracting officers and, and small business professionals, while they have their own perhaps internal database or list of favorites, um, that's not where you're playing at at the moment because you're still kind of an unknown to a lot of these folks. DSBS is your, is your path to success there. The dynamic small business search tool um, is the extension of SAM.gov. When companies got started, um, the owner typically stood this up and they did the minimum activity they needed to do. And you go into DSBS, it's the same thing. There was minimal activity in there. I'll give you an example of how bad it is. Um, almost 75% of the small businesses registered in DSBS don't have a website that the, uh, the buyers can go to. That means if you don't have a website the buyers can go to, then they'll just move on to your competitor who does have it. So um, one out of four doing it correctly is... Um, bad for everybody else, but good for you in the sense that you can come up on the, on the pack. So let me talk about quickly, how do they search? Because it's really important for you to understand how they do their market research, because then you will understand how important it is for you to do nothing else tonight, but to update your DSPS profile. So the first thing they do over on the graphic on the right-hand side, you see our sales funnel or funnel, right? Um, all small businesses that are registered in SAM are in this pool when, when they start. And so the, the government um, comes in there just like they go into Google. Google has every single plumber in the whole world in there. And now I begin to shortlist that list of plumbers or the government shortlists us small businesses in a very uh, methodical way. The first thing they do is type in a keyword. I'm looking for somebody who does SharePoint or um, eyeglass uh, activity or whatever, right? They type that in. They generally do not type in a NAICS because a NAICS will just bring back way too many results but a keyword, they can narrow the results of the small businesses. So when they type in the keyword, they get a whole bunch of people coming back. Let's say there's a thousand. The first thing they do when they look at all these is they look to see which ones have capability narrative. If your capability narrative is blank, they don't even look at you. If your capability narrative is there, they analyze it really quickly to say, does it appear that this person does what I thought they would do? Here's the example. Um, I search for uh, eyeglasses, but when I look at the capability narrative, it says we're an IT uh, application development and program management firm. OK, well, somewhere there's a mismatch, but that company doesn't do what I do. So they, they shortlist you. You're off the list. And um, in market research, they're just trying to get 10 or 20 small businesses. If they have that, that's really good market research. Right. That's fair. Um, so this is the way they whittle down. So capability narrative. It's a little paragraph in DSBS. And so that's the second thing they do. From all of the people who did well there, the um, they then the government then looks at the um, past performance at the very bottom of your DSBS profile, and down there is experience. 
And initially it doesn't even matter what you have there because most people have nothing. So if you're blank, you tend to get off the short list. More importantly, if you have relevant past performance in there, you get on their short list and get closer to that invitation to bid. Um, and then the last thing is, like I mentioned, they wanna come in and uh, do quick uh, research on you. They say, okay, here, I just found a bunch of companies that look like they're good to go. Let me just check out their website. And when they click on the website, they expect to be able to get to the website. Um, but I mentioned 75% of us fail at this stage. Inside of DSBS, and here's the one tip you should take away if you take nothing else. Inside of DSBS, your website is listed. If it does not begin with HTTP or HTTPS, then it fails. Any government buyer who uses DSBS knows this from experience because they've clicked on it and it fails. And when I say fail, I mean 404 error. It's a, it, it, I have no idea why it happens and I don't care. I just know that if you don't have HTTP on your, um, on your website there, then it doesn't go through. And what would that make you do? And just move on to the next plumber, right? And that's what it makes them do. So if you do one thing only out of this entire webinar, go to your SAM profile today, pop in there, Go through the pages to get to the website and just put HTTP or HTTPS um, colon slash slash before the www. Okay, so that's the funnel and that's how they get to the invitation of bid. Um, one last thing I wanted to mention just on small business specialists, I've said it before, but um, the way you can get small business specialists from an independent uh, agency, a, a base or whatever, is uh, make sure they have your capability statement and they know who you are. Later on, I go into a lot of marketing type activity, but really just by getting your capability statement to them, and I don't mean spam them, I mean talking to them and, and they, they now have accepted transfer of that capability statement from you to them, um, they'll, they'll treat it professionally and they'll put it in their pool of capability statements. And so now you're on their radar for the next time they need something. Um, let me go ahead and move on to how you can make that buyer shortlist. Uh, we've already talked about a lot of this stuff, but um, when you're talking about uh, the small business professionals, I always say, and I mean no disrespect to the small business professionals, but talk to them as if you're talking to your grandmother or your significant other who knows nothing about your business. Because uh, they, these small business professionals generally sh shouldn't know about your business. How could they know about GPS and flooring and IT development, records management, um, rocket ships to Mars, building naval battleships? They can't know about everything, right? And so what they wanna know is, does this company look like it could serve my agency? And is the message that you're providing on your capability statement so clear and concise that they go, oh, this looks like it's probably for this, this department or this office within my agency. So make sure it's clear and concise on your capability statement. Um, contracting officers, if you wanna get on their short list, you have to have contracting vehicles, just flat out. Um, now, can you get uh, wing contracts without a contracting vehicle? Of course you can, but that's the hardest way for a government contracting officer to award a contract. It's much easier um, when they use contract vehicles. It, it just is, you can learn more about that later. And um, if you're an 8A firm with a contracting vehicle, then you've hit the absolute epic for um, easiness in contracting for contracting officers. We don't need to fight the rules. We need to understand them and say, okay, that's how it's played. And the reason I say this is, and um, uh, you can see the bullets down below where it says team up with firms that are primes on your vehicles. You can get on vehicles either officially or unofficially just by teaming up with other firms that have those contract vehicles. So then when you're talking to contracting officers, you can say, oh, I can be reached on these vehicles. Um, and, and some people on their websites might put, these are the ones I'm prime on, these are the ones I'm subcontract on. But either way, you could team up with somebody and say, hey, you can prime it, I just developed the work but at least you know the vehicles. And so that's a bigger conversation, but understand the contracting officers, one of the biggest things they care about is contracting vehicles. So then program offices, I said this before about putting content out. They, they don't care about a contract vehicle at all. They could care less if I'm a veteran owned company, a hub zone. Most of them don't even know what that stuff is. Obviously they know what a woman owned or a veteran owned is, right? But um, they care only that you will help them execute the mission uh, effectively and efficiently. So they want to know that you're an industry expert. The way you do that is by putting out uh, content, by by showing somehow that you are the expert out there. And so there's a lot of ways that we can talk about it. There's people out there with webinars. I have some training on it, but 
for today, just know that if you keep it a secret that you're an expert, then that program office won't know about you, but they will know about your competitor. Um, last tip I wanted to put in here about the small business specialist is have your capability statement reviewed by them. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite things to tell people is to reach out to a, a small business specialist and say, would you mind taking 15 minutes, review my capability statement and, and give me any feedback as it relates to how I can make it better uh, so it's more, you know, so that people in your agency would would read it, frankly. And um, small business specialists are happy to help. And let me do a slide, a side plug for PTAC counselors. They're happy to do this type of thing as well. Now, here's what you have to do. When they give you advice, listen to it and do it. These guys are the experts, especially the small business specialists. They know how um, people read things and capability statements within their agency. So do what they say and then follow up and say, I did what you said. Does this look like what you thought you were telling me? And when you have done that, they will pass it forward. And, and somewhere on here, I have another slide, right? That talks about how do you move it forward? And that's how you do it. Um, okay. Let me move forward. I talk about social media, but I'm hoping a lot of you know this already, but this, the social media is how you prove that you're a, uh, um, industry expert out there. One of the things I also talk about just going with those slides is, is be focused on what you're trying to do. If you try to go everywhere, you won't do it. And here's just two quick slides that show it. In the Army, if you don't know this, there's three commands. Now there's a fourth command, the Futures Command. Um, but there's uh, three commands. But inside of the Army, there's also service commands. And so you need to understand what's out there. And this is why all of us who give guidance to small businesses say focus focus on an agency, focus on a scope of work or, or core competency. In this case, I might sit there and look at this and go, well, you know, I do cyber work. Uh, this is of all the service commands. I need to learn all about the U.S. Army Cyber Command out there in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. OK, so um, I'm moving through this really fast and I got 20 minutes as I as I cruise along into this. Um, how can I stand apart from my competitors? Uh, the number one thing is just do what I told you. Um, I am not trying to be difficult. I have a lot of years experience and mostly what I'm telling you now, I didn't do before. And it, it really infuriates me. I built a company that was almost $10 million and I didn't really know all these things. And I just look back and say, wow, I could have built a $20 million company if I had just done the right things. Um, and there's really nothing that's consolidated out there that shows that or or it just didn't reach me. And so I'm trying to reach as many of you, but do what I'm telling you and you'll be in that top 25%. Um, I just showed you this on the commands, but it's the same thing on your core competency. That second bullet is uh, find a clear specialty that you do. Know the agency better than they do. And what this really means is there's so much that comes out from the agency. Uh, here's a quick example. The army just put out a its vision for the next 10 years, the 2028 vision. Well, Within a month of them putting it out, which I'm assuming 90% or 80% of the Army personnel didn't even know exist, I quickly summarized it into a video and broke it down into an understanding and then just dumped it on LinkedIn. And that allowed me to first understand what the Secretary of the Army was trying to communicate with the vision. And second, be able to share out there that, hey, I know about the Army and I care enough about the Army that I'm putting this together. Um, does it win me business? No, but it begins to develop the trust that, um, hey, this guy's focused on uh, the army. And so that's what I mean. You can do that same thing. There's a lot of stuff within a particular agency when you choose it, that if you become an expert, uh, you get in there. Uh, fourth bullet, I wish it went without uh, saying, but, you know, for example, one of my, and I, and I hope no one on the call is, is this person, but one of the things I don't like hearing, and but I ride with it, is when people ask me on LinkedIn for my phone number. Um, or my email address. And the reason I don't like it is because on LinkedIn in the contact information is my phone number and my email. Now I'm Neil and so who cares? But when you're calling a customer and you want money from them, uh, you wanna be making sure that you've done your homework enough that you're not asking those basic questions. And then when you reach me, you say, Neil, who do you know who's in cybersecurity that I can meet? I'm like, oh, okay, that's a different one. <laughs> so uh, please just make sure you do that. It's called situational awareness. Um, I already mentioned follow the advice. And then uh, this is uh, said by contracting officers and, and small business specialists all the time. Don't introduce more problems to the government. They already have a problem. They know they have a problem. They're looking for people with solutions. If you can't solve their problems, move on. Now, if you want to be innovative, that's something totally separate. But don't make innovation your standard. 
uh, innovation should be something that's unique. Um, if that's your whole business model, that's unique and you should be pursuing like SBIRs or something. So uh, that's a sidetrack uh, that somebody can go down. Let me move on to the capability statement. I'm gonna move forward really fast on this because I talked about you wanna make it easy for them to forward it. The small business specialist is looking um, to read this in six seconds. Think about how fast six seconds is, right? Um, it probably takes you longer to read this, the words on my slide than six seconds. And so if you move over to the right-hand side, government contracting officers read in a Z and I'm gonna tell you what they see with my capability statement here. Um, the first thing they see is my company name, right? Ah, oh, cool logo. And then they see the cage and the duns. They say, okay, this person's registered to do business with the government in SAM. Then they move over and they see uh, veteran owned and hub zone. They're like, okay, that person's got tickets. They come down really quick. They see the communication outreach. They don't bother reading this stuff in the middle. They see core competencies. Good, good. He's got his core competencies listed. Strategic communication and outreach, training and project management. Okay, that's what you do. Um, okay, differentiators. They read that maybe briefly. They come down to the recent experience and they quickly look in. And for me, what's on there are a whole bunch of bullets that are not federal related because I, I don't have any experience yet. I've just started my company. So I put down my experience experience as more of just an individual professional. Um, it was my way of trying to make the, the capability stand out a little bit more, but they caught me and, and they recognized exactly what it was. If you have experience, you should put it here. And I, and, and I said, I don't have it. They said, well, this is fine then. Um, and then the bottom part of the Z is you come down to the blue and this is just the contact information and the NAICS. Um, and they liked how the NAICS was bolded there that shows that's the prime NAICS. So let me pop back up. I just really quickly went through these bullet number four, the core components. That's pretty much all they want on the capability statement. So many of us try to turn it into uh, the next step document or piece of information. Um, capability statements is just designed to open the door. Once the door is open, then you go in and you explain a lot more about your company. Then you talk about complex stuff. But the, the person who typically gets a capability statement is the small business professional. They don't need to absorb this at a deep level. They need to absorb it as a at a grandmother level. And I say a grandmother level, meaning that those people are still smart, but they're not engaged in current industry or something. Right. And my apologies to all the working grandmas out there. But um, the the idea is when you get the second meeting with the program office, now you bring your your technical game and your jargon game because that's what they expect to see. One last thing I want to say really quick on this capability statement is never, ever, ever say that you're a woman-owned company, a veteran-owned company, an 8A company, or whatever. No one cares in the government. They don't. Even the contracting officer doesn't care until they do. And um, the reason is because there's 300,000 roughly uh, small businesses out there, and we all go in and go, hey, I'm a veteran-owned company. I should get business. Well, thanks, Neil. No, you shouldn't. You know, Show me you can solve the agency's mission. Then I'll look and go, oh, hey, you're a, a veteran-owned company. Um, so don't say it, but feel free to scream it on paper. And that is exactly what I found that these logos do. When you just put the 8A or the woman's, uh, woman on small business, whatever your logos are in this top right, when you put it there, they themselves shout, oh, your hub zone and move on. And now they don't get mad at me for saying it, but they just said it in the first five minutes. Oh, in this case, right, the first six seconds. So um, let the paper scream out your designations you talk to your core competencies. Okay, so uh, how do you get teaming partners or how do you get selected by teaming partners? Here, uh, it's really important to go small, not large. Stay away from Booz Allen, stay away from Dell. Why on earth would they hire a company that basically has just started? Now, if you're a, um, a large, small company, that's a whole different situation, right? Now you're playing at that level. But for all of us, and me included with this new company, um, playing with the largest doesn't make any sense at all. What you want to do is go find companies, um, depending on who you are on this call, but you want to find companies that are between three and twenty million dollars, and and uh, generally you don't want to go too far away uh, from where you're currently at. But those are the companies where the owner still remembers what it was like to struggle, um, where they have uh, potentially a lot of different contracts that pop in and out. Um, a reminder, by the way, if it hasn't been said, go ahead and refresh. Uh, go ahead and refresh your presentation if you have any uh, issues. Sometimes that happens. Um, <clears throat> anyways, um, da, 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 sorry. So for uh, smalls, though, go small because there's a lot more chance of success at a small. The largest, it's just hard. And they'll, the largest will tell you that's themselves. They're, they can't manage the risk and they can't take the risk. Not just that. They can be choosy. Why would they take somebody like me 
with no past performance when they can take somebody like me with past performance. Um, care more about their success. I've said this before. Do unto others as you want them to do to you. Uh, when you talk to any teaming partner, focus on their needs. Focus on helping them be successful. If you help enough people become successful, you will become successful. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk is a guy on social media out there who has termed this phrase, jab, 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 right hook. And what he meant by this was give, 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 ask. And the idea is you don't give, 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 take, right? You give, 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 and then ask. And so if you want to have a uh, somebody with a teaming partner, for example, don't go in on day one and say, I'd like a subcontract. Maybe you follow them for a few weeks on LinkedIn. And when you see them post an award win or something else, you shout out, hey, congratulations. And maybe you forward it off to a, another federal agency and say, hey, this is great, you know, blah, blah, blah. You're, you're, you're trying to help them. You're giving, giving. There's a lot of ways we talk about giving advice on how to give, give, give. But make sure you're thinking of them first, then yourself. Um, this is a no brainer usually, but follow up on the same day, if not within the same hour. And I'm telling you, this isn't something I'm saying you must do because it's the right thing to do. I'm saying if you want to be selected above other people, do this because so many um, prime contractors, no matter what size they are, small, large, doesn't matter. So many prime contractors work with a lot of subcontractors and they need to get work done when they ask for it. So if there's a a call out for, hey, I need you to write this paragraph or answer this piece of information. They're looking for teaming partners who get back to them right away. That shows them that you're serious about doing business and serious about helping them win that contract. So, you know, if you're going to try to build a relationship with somebody, make sure you're following up in that same same day for sure. Um, demo winning competence goes back to how you target the uh, program office. Just make sure you're out there showing that you're an industry expert. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, this is everywhere, right? But uh, don't say that you do everything. And when I when I say that, by the way, I even mean it when it's tighter. Uh, don't come in and say you do flooring. You know, you do tile work or you do uh, road paving or, you know, you in application development, you do SharePoint development. Be really specific. The smaller and the younger your company is, the, the uh, more specific your specialty or core competencies should be. That's how you're going to win is become really, really good at something and you will become known at that and you will be sought after for that. But if you do multiple things, and I don't just mean really crazy multiple, but I mean, if you say you do Oracle development and SharePoint development, well, those are completely different things, you know? And so people will look and go, well, I think I want a company that specializes in SharePoint. And um, so that's really important about being specific. So a couple of bonus tips here as we uh, race into the last 10 minutes. Um, these are my, everything in here is my opinions, right? But it's my opinions based on a lot of experience and in helping a lot of people. I've helped hundreds of businesses this year. And uh, in fact, we're helping a lot of people uh, push contracts towards HubZone because, you know, we're in the HubZone Chamber of Commerce, but I'm expanding that to be able to try to help more people. Um, but we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts too. But what I've discovered is I don't actually want to help people get the, the big contracts. I really want to help people get the first hundred grand or the first million, because that's the hardest thing. Once you have that, you begin to become more mature in your organization. You can repeat it on your own and you need people like me less. And so um, one of the things I say here is subcontract for the first three years. The the uh, Another way of thinking of this is don't prime contract until you've um, written or participated, excuse me, on at least 30 prime contracts. And what that means is go find uh, somewhere where you can subcontract under a prime and ask them if you can write a paragraph or two on a proposal. Can you write a section or two on a proposal? Can you write a page or two on a proposal? Um, if you haven't been in the government contracting space, you have no idea what you're doing, which is fine. I, I didn't have an idea what I was doing. Um, but when you get in and subcontract under a willing teacher, prime contractor, you will learn so much and you will build a foundation for your company that will um, generate years of positive revenue for you going forward, right? Those first three years, what's the hurry? Revenue from subcontracting or revenue from prime contracting is still money in your pocket. So um, really think about that first tip. Contracting vehicle, it's kind of the same thing. They're not going to give it to you much anyways, but I say it for the same reason. First, learn about the government, then go after the vehicles. Um, 8A thing, I think, you know, follow up with me on the 8A thing. That's their rule. But the reason I put it there is uh, don't get your 8A until you're making money. Because then when you get the 8A, you'll be ready to make a lot of money. 
Um, there's so many 8A companies, 50% or more that don't even get a contract in. And I feel so bad for them that I, I run a great training for them. Uh, but, you know, so hold off on that. The, the reason I say number four, go after it at any point, because um, there is no end date on it. And it's a nice thing to have that if you happen to team up with another uh, small business, that's a woman owned business, the two of you can count towards the 51%, 49% thing. Um, follow, follow up later um, on bullet number five there, where it talks about similarly situated entities. There's a lot of benefit for you to work with similar companies as yours. Okay, and then um, I talked about a, a core competency, pick it, pick it strong. Um, if you go through my DSBS course, which is free um, on the hubzonechamber.org site, you will see me drive down into core competency for you. So a whole training part in, the, in there. And then um, create a daily marketing schedule. I'm gonna put out some training on this as well soon that talks about how do I do this? It's so overwhelming with all these different things and trying to maintain relationships. How do I manage my marketing activity? And um, the way you do it is just to schedule it. How are you going to manage a government contract, right? You're going to manage it. You're going to put together a schedule. The government's going to ask for your project schedule. Well, hold your own marketing um, efforts to that same quality expected in project management. And it doesn't have to be crazy. 15 minutes a day and you're, you're doing better than 90% of the other small businesses that are out there. So um, here's a quick reminder of what we touched on. Uh, we already went through all this stuff. Um, I appreciate everybody staying for this uh, webinar as we went through. I'm going to take Q&A in a minute and, and talk about some other things, but I'm going to send you a checklist and I really encourage you to take a look at the checklist because it lays out what you should do. And uh, keep in mind though, if you just did one thing from this entire webinar, just go put HTTP or HTTPS before your WWW, right? So it's HTTP colon slash slash. All right, so let's move into um, uh, questions. I just want to um, check. Oh, so let me take the first question. Somebody asked me about, is there going to be slides? No, I don't provide those slides. I have a success club and it's, um, people can join it um, and they get access to any webinars I do, but I don't post these out in YouTube or wherever. But um, uh, I periodically um, uh, re, re hold the webinar. I do it live so I can keep trying to improve what I'm doing and the information I share. So uh, if you don't want to join the success club, which is fine, then you can go to um, uh, you could stay in the chamber as a member and I'll notify you of the next time I do this webinar. Um, I did want to mention that um, the success club, I said it quickly. Um, that's where I make my money. And I just want to tell you really quick, uh, I set up a success club that I could build a community of small businesses. It's a hundred dollars a month, a lot of training, a lot of personal um, guidance as you try to grow your business. If you're interested, follow up with me. Um, that's the end of the sales pitch on that, right? I, I want you to join, but I don't want to hit you with a hard, uh, hard sale there. Uh, let me look for questions here. Go ahead and remember to refresh your screen uh, if you need to go live um, because sometimes it kind of holds up. So I'm looking here. Uh, Fernando's got a comment. I might as well just share it here about um, uh, 8A, the 8A program, 70% 70, 70 of your revenue. Oh, okay, so he's just talking. It's funny. He's, he's talking about a limitation in uh, SBA for qualifying as an 8A firm. But if you follow what I'm saying, you won't run into that problem because what I'm trying to tell you is to subcontract and find your good five teaming partners so you're growing revenue. But Fernando, great tip. Thank you. Um, and then looking here. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay, so what other questions do we have out there? Thoughts on FedBizOps. Um, I'm a huge fan of, uh, thanks Henry, a huge fan of um, uh, FedBizOps. So, but here, let me tell you why though, right? Uh, let me preface this always with, um, you know, you should be subcontracting. That's a great way to build it. But if you're at that stage where you can prime, um, FedBizOps is phenomenal and the best place for it is source of SOT. Uh, there's a lot of things I could uh, touch on on FedBizOps, but source of SOT is a gold mine. Um, excuse me, it's when the government is reaching out saying, hey, we're interested in awarding this contract, but we're trying to figure out who does it or we're trying to shape the scope. But it's wide open for you to be able to talk to the government. And it's wide open for you to be able to respond with whatever you do. I'll give you a quick scenario or um, example of what I've done in the past is um, there was a contract and the contract was for um, uh, share, it was SharePoint 
and if you don't know SharePoint, it's a Microsoft product, but um, SharePoint management and migration and something else, right? Training. They, they were, the organization was focused on adoption and training. And um, so I responded back to the sources side saying, yeah, we're interested in this and this and this. And by the way, here's an example training document I did for the Air Force. Here's a, a, an example migration plan that I did for uh, you know DHS. Here's an example um, uh, adoption plan that I did for uh, EPA, and I'm just making those agencies up at the moment, right? But I was able to put that in. And when they got it, they then just decided to go to orals and had had me come in and talk to them about, well, what are you talking about here? And and when I went to that presentation, I brought three of my colleagues and all of us were the experts. And when they heard us, we just knocked their socks off, right? Is um, is because we're focused on our specialty. But the reason I was able to get that was because there was a uh, uh, sources sought that I responded to. Um, so definitely follow up on FBO. Uh, you should take a look at our events calendar on the hubzonechamber.org website because every day we do a set aside call. And even if it's not specific to you, you should join one or two of them to see how we do it and hear how Jim White, um, the executive director of the Hubzone Chamber, um, advises on FBO and the interested vendor. That's a really big one as well. Let me cruise down. And um, Thanks, Henry. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, the presentation won't be available for uh, um, uh, for anybody here. It'll be available somewhere else. But you can go to the uh, Chamber website. Um, that's funny. Uh, there's a uh, – just trying to scroll through because there's more than I'm seeing. But DSBS is the best way to find contractors to pair up with. Uh, so, uh, Alex, I'm assuming you're asking that question. And DSBS is, it's, it's like you just threw me a softball, right? Um, DSBS is exactly where you go to find somebody who'd be a good partner. Um, what I did when I started my company the, uh, initially, this new company back in October, um, I guess I did this November, December. And what I did is I went into DSBS and I typed in SharePoint. And in my case, I typed in HubZone since I knew I was a HubZone company. And DSBS brought me back 71 companies. And I wrote individual emails. I didn't spam them. I wrote an email and said, hey, Joe, I do this. I really want to um, uh, work with you. I'm trying to build my past performance, but I'm uh, phenomenal at um, SharePoint. And I have a lot of government past performance in SharePoint, just not in this company I'm in. Could we talk about how I might be able to have you look good on your contract and me being able to um, build some past performance? And so 71 people I reached out to, uh, 15 got back to me within 24 hours. And um, of that, there was like three or four that had real opportunities that I could talk with them about. Um, just trying to look through there. Okay, so here's a good one. Uh, Al uh, and <laughs> Alex, thanks for the questions. Those are those are great. Uh, uh, Henry, just a reminder that we don't have um, uh, we don't have the uh, uh, I don't present a. Uh, um, I don't make these slides available afterwards. They're uh, they're part of my success club. And so people can have access to them all the time. But here I present it and whoever shows up gets to see it and, and hear it. Um, Alex, a great question about FBO though, where you're saying whenever you um, reach out to them, you don't get any traction. Um, so there's a hit or miss on it, right? For sure. But if you're trying to contact, contact the contracting officers at the bottom, um, uh, First, you got to understand that they're busy. If you're ever contacting them about an RFP, you're not going to hear back. Um, and, and that's just flat out rules. So don't, don't worry about that. Um, but if you're in the sources sought phase, you, well, you should take full advantage of your small business specialist. You should be reaching out to them as it relates to that FBO opportunity and say, hey, I, um, uh, I'm going after, I'm going to respond to this sources sought, but I was wondering if you might be able to help me reach out to this, uh, this group. And I'm going to go a few minutes over time just uh, for people who know. I'm not going to have anything at the end. I'm going to answer questions, but there's no magic surprise. Um, but I am going to keep asking, qu answer questions for a few more minutes. Um, anyway, sorry. So with uh, uh, FBO and trying to get responses, reach out to that small business specialist and say, can you put me in touch with the program manager on this activity? Or, you know, is there something I can talk to the contracting officer about? Um, one of the things to keep in mind, and I'm not saying, Alex, you do this, but um, be completely respectful and nice uh, and um, and clear, right? So when you get in, really the contracting officer can't play favorites. And so you need to be saying, you know, um, I saw the sources saw it. I have this question. 
you know, if you wouldn't mind getting back to me or something. And then you just put the question very clearly. And if it's a question about what you're seeing in writing, tell them uh, the page number, the paragraph number, um, you know, and then exactly what the question is. Uh, make sure you're putting the solicitation in the email so that you see it. Um, but also try to give them a phone call too. So sometimes that works to uh, uh, reach out to them. And the last thing I will say about that FBO solicitation is if you don't know what a PCR is, you want to learn who they are. Um, the Small Business Administration has a, a, a role called the Procurement Center Representatives, and they're, they're called PCRs. And these people's job is to make sure their agencies that they're responsible for are fairly considering small businesses for every single opportunity. So anytime an opportunity isn't going to a small, then they need to, then the PCR is get engaged and, and they look at it. So um, the SBA provides that oversight. They're really, really busy, incredibly busy, very nice people, uh, but they are probably not looking at every single opportunity. It's virtually impossible. There's you know, tens and tens of thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them every year, but they do look if somebody raises it up in their awareness. And so uh, for the HubZone Chamber, we've been doing that a lot on behalf of all HubZone companies. As an individual, you might do something similar to that. So let me uh, pause it. That was a long answer about FBO and, and getting back to it. Any other uh, questions there? I'm resetting my chat so I can see everything as well. By the way, if you're, uh, if you're still on and you've appreciated this webinar, if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up, uh, that's always nice. It, it helps me um, recognize you, you're out there and you appreciate it. Um, you know, if and, and again, if you want to know about how I might be able to help you more, just go ahead and, and ping me, either email me or catch me on LinkedIn. I would absolutely recommend you follow me on LinkedIn if you're not doing that, because I put out a ton of free content and LinkedIn is my delivery uh, choice. The team puts together a lot of stuff and it all comes out there. So um, while I do charge for some stuff, I put out way more for free. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. The um, Any other questions I can answer for you as we're uh, getting down to the last few minutes here? I appreciate it. And uh, Cecilia, Jim, anything I missed that I might want to say? Okay, well, it looks like the questions are uh, kind of wrapping up. Um, feel free to try to reach out to me if you got any questions that you think about later or maybe you wanted to ask one off. Um, and uh, reminder, check out the hubzonechamber.org website. Become a member. It's free to become a member of the Hubzone Chamber, but you get access to uh, a free training on the DSBS course. It's a full-fledged course that I, was, um, I created that has six modules that go into uh, great detail on how to make yours the best DSBS profile out there. It also has videos about meet the experts where you can meet the government experts that are out there, contracting officers. So there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, and uh, small business specialists, uh, Alex, I won't go too far into it, but go to the website, hubzonechamber.org. And inside of there, one of the things we provide is links to the small business specialists, links to the portal. And um, so that's how you find it. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this, uh, wrap this up. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar now, but I appreciate you all being on and I appreciate any feedback you give me, even if it's shoot me an email or popping something on LinkedIn. Uh, let me know how I did and, and maybe other questions you have that I could add to future tips.